So Kayo and Eileen said that having this drug present in the mm. armamentarium for treatment may influence the first line treatment decision, maybe more, going more towards GEMNAB, mm. where then you would have the 5-FU and liposomal renotecan second line. Does that influence either you or George? It definitely influences me because, uh, you know, Braxane, uh, gemcitabine, you get thrombocytopenia and you get neuropathy. And those are not side effects that you see with the Naliri regimen. So you kind of rest the bone marrow, you rest the nerves. It makes a lot of sense to go for one FDA approved drug to another FDA approved drug. So that sequence, I think, is becoming more and more uh, accepted and uh, used. And I agree with John. I mean, I, I'd like to think that these drugs deposit in the tumor, the stroma, the desmoplasia, and get to the cancer cells over a long period. I mean, we know the pharmacology is very different with this uh, Naliri regimen, so I want to believe that it is doing that and that we're getting to the tumor. And so the sequencing is going to be important. Now, if this uh, PEG-PH20 compound is a positive study, uh, this phase three trial, then we're all going to be using uh, NABPAC attacks all gem up front with this third agent and then going down to uh, Naliri in the second line. So we may be heading that direction uh, anyway. So. Yeah, and I'll just echo. I mean, you want to. I'm thinking about the whole chessboard when I start the game. Yeah. And so, what have I got to play, and when am I going to play it? Um, so, certainly having these kinds of options through second line makes me feel a little better about first line choices. Sure. Okay, so throwing this out there, you go GemNab, you go 5FU Naliri. Do you use full Fox third line? Absolutely. I mean, I think oxaliplatin has demonstrated activity in this disease, and if a person is uh, strong enough and well enough for it and their neuropathy isn't too uncomfortable, I think uh, Falfox is at least a rational consideration, not clearly supported by data in this setting. And as John alluded to, we have mixed data for the value of oxaliplatin uh, sec second line with one positive study and one negative study, so take your pick in yeah. terms of <laughs> where you fall. Um, but none Nonetheless, we know it does have activity that's already known from Fulfirinox, so it's, it's rational in, in the absence of a suitable trial third line. I think Falfox is, is the go-to uh, regimen in that setting versus uh, infusional 5-FU, but so that's less attractive. So we certainly changed the field, right? So it sounds like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, outside of specific patient populations, the BRCA patients, the patients with a large disease burden that need a really immediate response, in general, on this panel, we're looking at GEMNAB, followed by 5-FU Naliri, followed possibly by Fulfox. Is that about right? Who would have thought we'd be talking about three lines of therapy <laughs> in pancreas cancer? And, and, you know, it's back to the early discussion about just the change in, you know, the paradigm for this. And, and it's really exciting. But I will throw out a note that we all work at places where we're getting patients to third line. Mm -hmm. And we have a research network which uses, you know, which incorporates a lot of other community-based hospitals and the like. And we keep saying, don't you want to open this third-line pancreas study? And they're like, we don't have third-line pancreas cancer. And, and it's a different patient. And um, so I do think the decisions around first and second line are even more important for that patient who comes in starting with a little, you know, 1.5 PS, a little, you know, a little less social support than the ones that are making it to our centers. Um, and so I, you know, uh, it's cool that we're thinking about yeah. it, but I also every day face the, the, the other side where they don't have third line patients. Well, let's say you've got somebody that comes into you with a performance status of two mm. right off the bat. Mm. Equal Lo to their doctor. Equal to, yes, exactly. <laughs> Looks just like you, yes. <laughs> and not a lot of social support. Is there a role or would you ever use gemcitabine monotherapy again? Almost never anymore. Yeah. I mean, first off, the doublet's easy, right? It's not that hard on patients. You've got all these dosing schemes that people have. And so, you know, you can get this in. And if they're, particularly if their PS is down uh, because of disease, mm -hmm. um, it's sort of backwards thinking to give gem monotherapy, in my opinion. So um, it is, ex I can't think of the last time I gave gem monotherapy since uh, NAB came on the market. Anybody? Yeah. And the impact trial shows that there's a month benefit mm -hmm. in PS2. So mm -hmm. yeah, there is a benefit there. So it makes a lot of sense to continue with the double instead of going back to just gen monotherapy. Please don't use our lot in monotherapy. <laughs> uh, we do see that from time to do time. See it, Please yeah. don't do that. If you're going to use a low, to be careful with your proton pump inhibitors.